Aquarius now. Cancers with Aquarius. Uh, I always speak about this one of my favorite placements right here because the eighth house is dealing with what you can't see, what's hidden. But Aquarius has strong channeling energies. So this is why a lot of Cancer Risings, okay, uh, you know, you guys are some of the, you know, this is one of the placements right here being a Cancer Rising, especially if you have placements in the eighth. Especially if you have placements in the eighth, especially if you're an Aquarius moon. That's like a very, very strong placement when it comes into channeling energies outside of this realm and whatnot, or spirits that are not in bodies no more, or in physical, you know, physical bodies and whatnot. C C Cancer rising, Aquarius moon, because that's the chart ruler, and you put it in the eighth house, but it's it's powerful, but it's scary if they're not vetted right. So if they don't have like if this if this is gonna be the child that see things at times, hear things at times, and they don't have nobody to talk to about it. If they don't have the like that could get that could get scary. Some of them could end up in, you know, in a straight jacket. So it's powerful, but it could end up a little chaotic in that way, though. But matter of fact, yeah, let me put my shit back in cancer. I forgot cancer is robbing niggas tonight. But so uh shit. When you're looking at um when you're looking at uh, the sun coming in here, when you're looking at the sun coming here, you're going to start to understand that, you know, you're going to start to understand how the partnerships you have in your life have accumulated you know, some type of eighth house energy in your life. Now, this for this weekend may have been serious business. I'm talking about cancers right now that found themselves feeling intense or feeling overwhelmed from something dealing with a partnership, a group that they're a part of in some type of shape or form. Uh, it's starting to become too much of an emotional burden. Uh, it, can, it may be even a partnership that's super pulling on your energy to participate with something. Um, oh man, my brother Voodoo Priest man in the building, man. Yo, what's going on, bro? Hope all is well. All right, you don't get more spiritual than that, brother over there. Y'all make sure you'll go tap in, man. You want to understand a little bit more about ritual work, the ancestors, how to get the altar together. That's the guy to tap into right there. All right, hope all is well, brother. I'm a cancer and I'm going through that right now. Look, look, so you here at the right time in the right place, brother. All right. So, you know, when we call when we're talking about um this weekend, you being able to identify that you don't play with that this weekend, Cancer. The minute you realize, like, okay, yeah, this this group, this partnership, this association, these niggas I've been working with or trying to build this business with, yeah, these niggas don't get it. Or I feel too overwhelmed trying to bring my energy to make things connect. You know, Cancer about connection, right? So if you're dealing with such a hard time trying to make things connect right now when air energies are in favor, it's expired, Cancer. You got what you needed to, you learned what you needed to learn from that space already. Now, this is the thing, though. Because you're making this entrance with Sun and Pluto into the seventh, eighth house, what I what I just said, you most likely experienced. There's no cancers in here that not that don't know about power and control issues in their relationships. There's no cancers in here that don't know about if a cancer rising tell me they done dated a narcissist, a narcissist, or niggas that gaslight. I'm be like, I feel you. I I know you ain't just chatting like everybody else because every time somebody say yeah the narcissist spell narcissist define that mother flipper all right don't we know what they talking about you trying to diagnose a mug out here but best believe yes with those energies cancer rising know all about it cancer rising know all about it you know, somebody once again projecting on them, making them feel bad for being so sensitive with their emotions. You you dealing with the cancer, you done work this cancer rising heart up and emotions up. It got them so emotionally invested into the situation. Cancer just don't jump into a relationship and be emotionally invested. They get intrigued by the potential of the connection being built. And once they see the other person reciprocating that place and effort into building the connection, cancer like, okay, bet it's being reciprocated. Let me jump into it now. Let's connect for real. That's why them, that's one of them signs you don't work up. You don't work them signs up for some situationship and think it's just going to be a situationship. No. All right. Listen, I'm the lucky Libra. Y'all know I'm going to keep it gangster. There's some signs you could deal with situationships. Cancer's not one of them. They're not. They're not. I tell you the situationships. Gemini, Libra. 
the, the Pisces. <laughs> They'll let it rock. All right, there's more places besides that, but those are some that come right to the head. Okay, Aquarius, Aquarius situation like a mother flipper. All right. You try to take things to another level. It's like, no, no, no. I think we good where we at. <laughs> your crib, your crib, your crib, my crib, my crib. Your bills, your bills, my bills, my bills. We don't need to con combine a damn thing, actually. All right? We don't need to combine a damn thing. Uh, all right? Okay? So, uh, not cancer. cancer. Even the cancers that think they could do a situation ship, they end up looking in the mirror like, what am I doing? <laughs> What the fuzz am I doing? My heart ain't built for this. I can't date this person and then know that they might be with somebody else Friday night when I want them in my fourth house. Cancer birthed out the fourth house. The fourth house, y'all, yeah, I'm telling you, y'all don't be knowing about cancer the way y'all supposed to be knowing about cancer. They come out the fourth house. Everything in the fourth house is close to you. So what happens when cancer get their heart worked up or something make them feel good and comfortable and it's not close to them? They lose their mind. I told you I like when my woman hit me up all up. I mean, where you at, daddy? Hurry up. I'm waiting for you at home. I'm wearing this nice thing for you. I got the food waiting for you in the oven. Damn, baby, I'm on my way. My bad. Yo, all right, fellas. I got to go. I got to go. I got my cancer woman waiting for me at home, and she blowing me up. So I know she about to love bomb me when I get to the crib. So cancer, when they heart in it, is in it, that's dumb right there. So how cancer is going to be able to send you them texts knowing potentially you done told them two days ago, like, yo, we not, is this not a relationship? <laughs> it's not a relationship. I need you to respect that. Cancer can't, it, come on, cancer can't deal with that. It needs it close to it. It needs to be able to connect to it when I want to connect to it. That's it. Bit, point blank, period. So uh, is, is another thing when the nigga is, is invested and, and he's actually busy or doing something. He's like, yo, baby, listen, my bad. I'm really busy right now. You know, I miss you like a motherfucker. Matter of fact, send me some of them pics. Send me, send me some of them pics so I can miss you some more. Here's a cash app. Go go, go, go get some groceries or something. Make something good because I'm coming over this weekend. I'm, I'm going to fuck up whatever you make and I'm, I'm, you're going to get eight too. Keep your cat. That's She going to be able to. She need that if you ain't going to see her Friday night. Like, all right, okay, I'm going to go. What you want? You want the turkey wings? You are, man. You don't know how to take care of the cancer woman right there. She needs some of that. All right? Connection, guys. Connection. So with all the things my cancer arises may have experienced in the seventh house, the gaslighting, the power and control situations. At times, cancer, you being power and controlling and being and projecting your emotions. Like, I ain't going to say you haven't. You damn sure may have jumped into some power control issues in your relationships and you had to watch yourself aka aka you got into this 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 thing now as a situation ship but what you thinking in your head no it's okay it's okay because i'm finna i know what their favorite food is now i know how to do that little thing that they like when we in the when we in the eighth house that, that little thing this is how cancer start thinking with that, there's a lot of y'all jumped into this bag while Pluto's in y'all seventh house. So let's not, let's not, I ain't gonna just victimize, I ain't gonna act like y'all's the victim all the time now. Sometimes y'all might have jumped into some defense mechanism that that made you go into that bag. And, and this, this is part of your Pluto. You had to go through some of these things to see your shadow in your relationships. Like, damn, now I'm jumping into this manipulative bag. I'm trying to do that little thing that they like and make their favorite food just to get cuffed. Just to turn this situation into something else. You know, this is me trying to work cardinal water, change the environment in the room, and do what I can to manipulate the situation in the partnership. And then it just ends up, you probably feeling unfulfilled or, you know, you're not getting the results that you want to stand a third. A nigga taking the perks and just going about their thing. Like, I don't know what you think this is going to change. <laughs> I told you. Thanks for the food, by the way. And thanks for doing the little thing that I like. Don't be telling nobody if you're doing that to me neither. But anyways, thanks for doing the little thing that I like. <laughs> but I'm good. Like, for real, this is not going to make me cuff you, all right? Oh, damn. That's cancer. You learned, right? I know you learned some of that. I know it's okay. Go all take a breath with each other. 
All right. Do I got to jump in my Montel for you? All right. Listen, Kansas, I know you've been in those situations where you may feel like you got taken advantage of, but that's just a cycle that was helping to tap you into your subconscious to understand who you truly are and who's worthy of the cancers, who's worthy of your giving, your affection, your love, your understanding. Those people were unworthy of it. Now you're understanding you're evolving cancer. All right, guys, I want to go more in depth with commercial break coming in. All right, guys, we'll be back in 30 seconds. Don't you go nowhere. It's the Montel Williams show. That was, they don't make them like that no more. They don't make them like that no more. They don't make them like that no more, y'all. Look how you're looking at you. He confident that he finna heal yo. <laughs> this smile is given. Book my session. I promise you, we're going to get to the bottom of what's of your marriage or what's going on in your marriage. We're going to get to the bottom of the trauma between you and your mom. Just book the session, come to the show, and be back after the commercial break. Don't you go nowhere. Oh, shit. I don't, I don't, I don't, I want to be, I don't even want to, man. I don't want to be in this realm no more. The 90s and the 2000s is over. <laughs> <laughs> Time out, your aqua, your aqua queen twenty four. <laughs> your aqua queen twenty four. You got to be the funniest, one of the funniest church members, yo. <laughs> that confident smirk with the smooth, illuminated moon, Cancerian influence, baldy. If he can't heal your marriage, it's over. If he can't get you and your mom to be hugging each other at the end of the show, it don't get y'all done. Chalk it up. This soul tie is not getting fixed in this this uh experience. Montel couldn't get it done. If you if you was dating them Aquariuses, ladies, if you a little a little disheartened right now, messing with the Aquarius man, y'all better go send Montel an email. Because the Lauren Hill album ain't going to do all the healing. Now the joy. That that album ain't going to do it all. It's a start. Lauren Hill was talking. I mean, that album is God's work. All right. A classic. But that album can only do so much healing, y'all. You got to go book. You, you go email Montel, man. All right. So with that sun moving into the eighth, it's reinvention time, Cancer. It's transmutation time, Cancer. Ooh, you about to see your healing properties for real, for real. Ooh, you about to see your healing properties for real, for real. But guess what? You want to know where the intensity comes? The intensity comes from you acting like everything you experienced in your seventh house is now is not now newfound knowledge and wisdom you have of being able to, how to identify a red flag a partnership that could turn into a negative cycle, not understanding how you self-sabotage or you're still in a state of using the projection and the gaslighting and the narcissistic energy and the power controlling energy you manifested in your life and you not realizing you're still jumping into these things as defense mechanisms. So you're, aka, you're being toxic in your relationships. Pluto's here to break all that down. Pluto's here to break all that down. You are evolving in that state. That that Pluto's out the seventh house. It is exactly where it wants to be. Pluto's exactly where it wants to be. You are the ones that people are going to be going to to understand how to heal. To to how to like, like okay, damn, Cancer Sunrise. Didn't you say you was in that toxic relationship, that toxic marriage, that business partnership that took from you this and the third? So you know Pluto be taken. You was in all them situations and how did you overcome? How did you persevere? Cancer, this is the responsibility you're getting right now. And why are you getting that responsibility? Because Pluto's awakening all the properties it takes to turn that into positive things to help you rise into your Phoenix energy in the eighth house, right? To get things that are feeling heavy, turn that into wisdom. Now you could go into connections, feeling more healthy, having a healthier sense of boundaries, being more paced with your connection and not feeling like you got to get extreme with, it, with how you put your heart into the relationship or not. It's like, yo, I don't have to get extreme with connection. I could pace this. Because the more I pace, it gives me opportunity to see things I need to see. All right? 
y'all done, listen, y'all didn't experience too much with Pluto in the seventh house, man. Y'all know too much about people and reading between the lines with people and understanding how people take their hurt and their psychological issues and dump them on other people. Like, cancers, I know y'all cancer around and you got stories. You got stories. I know. All right? So, that Pluto gets into the eighth house. Keep in mind, since Pluto likes to be here, since this is the area where Pluto feels so empowered to help you transform, to conquer things dealing with heavy negative energies, traumas, insecurities, all of this, all of the spiritual baggage that may be in your eighth house. Because Pluto feels so empowered here, just know with great power comes with great, great responsibility, with great awareness come great responsibility. You have a smaller room margin for ever, Cancers. You have a smaller margin for error than other signs when it comes into things dealing with connection energy. Because you accumulated some wisdom from the seventh house and it's very aware of what you should be aware of what some of your triggers are. Self-sabotaging habits, all of these negative things. You know, Pluto should be well aware. And um this is a this chapter of your life will continue to refine these things. So I'm not saying you're gonna be perfect, okay, but you have a great awareness of these behaviors that can create negative cycles in partnerships. And there has to be some sense of acknowledging how these traits may still may have been picked up or you've adapted some of these traits that people projected on you. Okay, and make sure you continue to stay adamant about healing these things, not spreading that into other people's lives, uh, embracing whatever healing journey that you have to embrace in order to be better for your potential opportunities for yourself and your potential opportunities. All right. Because guess what? If not, Pluto's going to manifest more of an intense connection and relationship than, than what you probably thought you experienced in the seventh house. Oh, you, oh, you, oh, so you acting like you don't know what a narcissist look like. Okay. Okay. Oh, so you acting like you don't know what dating a nigga with mommy issues look like. Okay. Fellas, you don't know what it looked like to deal with a woman that, you know, got daddy issues. A woman that's draining, has no sense of what you're trying to build in life. And you trying to uplift her in some type of shape or form, but she don't know how to be some type of a, you know, understanding support system in your life. And you allow yourself to stay in a relationship where you can't take advantage of to please a woman for no reason, <laughs> once again. And she not being appreciative of nothing. <laughs> last time she said, thank you, I appreciate you, babe. When the last time you sent the cash shot? When the last time you did something this, that, and the third? You did all that this week. You ain't even getting none this week. You still axing for some. You still got to ax for some. This is your girlfriend. It's your wife. What am I doing axing for some? I'm supposed to get right up behind you while you in the kitchen making the muffins. Like, hey, hold on, baby. Just go. You ain't got no drawers on, right? Let me just lift this up. Okay, get up in there. I'm sorry. I've been abstaining. I'm a little... The fantasies have been in my head now. <laughs> Gotta ask for... That sound a little... That sound a little aggressive. Sound like you just be taking it. But guys, y'all know what I mean, man. When you in a when you in a harmonious relationship, like ain't no like, babe, can I get some of this? Like, come you just initiate it. Get a little touching, a little kissing. Your girl start knowing what time it is. Like, babe, stop, stop. No, don't stop, babe, stop. Then it's game time. You gotta ask my girl for some. She should always want some of the man. She should always want some of the man. All right, fellas. So I know I be talking to my ladies a, a, a lot subconsciously because I know my, you know, I know my ladies be in the building. I can't forget my fellas though. All right. Yeah, some of y'all cancer fellas in here. And you know about a woman that'll drain your ass. Pluto in the seventh. Oh man, you know about a draining woman. You know about a projecting ass woman too. All right. A lying woman. You, I know y'all got your stories, Cancer Sunrising men. Okay, 
So you go ahead and not do no work and understand why you allow these situations to manifest. Is it part of the relate? Is it part of the the relationship with you and your parents? You allow women to come in your life and take from you and not give and not or not or show appreciation or give some type of emotional spiritual support. I know I said what I said about men being depended on. All right, but damn, like I said, we gotta give. We there's still that doesn't mean women don't give nothing. All right, okay. Shit, women feel more inclined to give when they feel like they got a nigga taking care of them and making sure they got a nigga that's, that's placing all his efforts to make sure his woman's mental and emotional stability is, is stable or, or she's sane and she's feeling peaceful. The more she can see that, pick up that like, yeah, my nigga is always, that's priority. His, his priority to make sure I'm good. You ain't got to tell your woman to do this, that, and the third. She's, she's thriving trying to make sure what she could do for your ass. All right? Niggas be acting like this is some shit that you just got to walk into the shit. I get it. Some people are naturally, you know, you may have a woman that's just naturally in the energy of giving and servicing this and the third. But damn, it comes to a point that it has to be something that continues to motivate, fuel that in some type of shape or form. Because eventually this person will be like, okay, damn, I'm doing all this service. So where, where's the effort being reciprocated? It starts feeling unfulfilling for them. You don't want your partner feeling like that shit whack. All right. Especially when you got so much selfish people out in the world. And people get into relationships for selfish reasons. So, um, you know, I seen a post saying something about like, you know, something about people. This person was saying, I know why relationships aren't working so much in the modern era. It's something about people getting into relationships because they're not getting into them in the name of growth. Oh, damn. You done triggered somebody. Why you didn't said all of that, brother? It was a brother, too. It's like, that's the problem. People don't get into relationships for growth. I said, oh, man, you're going to. Are you talking like this this week? Man. I'm telling you, that's how you be falling in love. You're talking to somebody and they hit you with some of this right here. Like, damn, nobody ever told you. Like, you be you mad talented with this. Like, nobody, like, your past niggas or nothing never, like, you know, helped you build that up or something. Oh, man, you got this girl that ain't never get the support. Never had her talents or nothing seen by a nigga. And she's like, oh, this nigga see me. Never had a nigga tell me this. This nigga trying to help me grow. This nigga telling me things that I can use to grow even if we don't fuck with each other. Those be the relationships you need to be like, I need to see what's to this. Shout out to all my Chicagoans in the chat. I like, I, I, I'm in the chat. I like when y'all say that. I'm trying to see what's to her. I'm trying to see what's to this. I like that. I, I had to take that from y'all. All right. Fellas, same thing with us too. Same thing with us too. Sometimes, I ain't going to lie, sometimes we be, I don't like using the word fall in love, but sometimes that love vibration can be birthed upon us. Niggas be finding different ways to, niggas just don't want to come off soft. (laughs) Niggas will find different ways to word shit. Nigga, just say fall in love. Sometimes that love vibration, the way it gets birthed upon us, fellas. (laughs) The way that love vibration just gets ushered in our life. (laughs) <laughs> nigga, you ain't, it's okay. Anybody judging you, Boro? It's like, we all done fell in love before some type of way. It's all, we ain't judging you. But seriously, as a man, sometimes you get a woman, you know, tell you some shit about your subconscious you ain't hear from another woman before. It's like, damn, you see that in me? Okay, all right. I got to see what's to this. I got to see what's to her. All right. And that's what this, that's what you that's what real significant spiritual relationships do. They're gonna see spirit, and see past the surface level, see past the activity you got going on in the physical realm, see spirit. All right. So uh, cancers with the sun moving at the same time. Sun, I already told you, a big weekend. Um, but as the sun transits the eighth house, keep an eye out for all the relationships that empower you to transform the things you know you need to change, and best believe the relationships that enable you and uh, you know uh. You the people the crack packs, the people that you have to get together with because they need you to stay into the same enabling patterns and cycles, and you gotta watch out for these people. You gotta watch out for these people, okay? Because they're gonna be identified. You, the sun is now trans- transiting the house of desires, okay, Cancer. So when we talk about attachments, you don't get no deeper than this, and you got Aquarius here. So best believe there's going to be a strong level of clairvoyance when it comes into your partnerships, especially from a building perspective. Understanding how the resources, contacts, people you have around in your life can help things expand 
uh, from something that you're really passionate about, but simply help you heal. I believe a lot of you guys will be uh, attracting a support system around this time. And if you see, if you notice, this is a very isolated space. That'll let you know right there, Cancer Sunrise. If you go through a crazy, crazy season and you feel kind of lonely, you feel kind of isolated, ooh, that's going to let you know right there, Cancer Sunrising. We might have been dealing with some attachment issues. We might have been depending on too much people for our sense of fulfillment and stability. All right? So weather it. Weather that storm a bit. Okay? Pluto coming in here. Listen, empowering transit. But like I said, small margin for error. Cancer sun rises. You learn too much in your relationships to get back with the toxic, no good having mother flipper. Not with Pluto in the eighth. Not with Pluto in the eighth. Don't do it to yourself, Cancer Sunrise. Don't do it to yourself. Please. All right. Talk about deep transformation. This is a long-term car. All the Pluto karma be long-term, man. It be long-term, bro. Okay? So you have to be careful. You have to be careful. A lot of y'all started the, the healing process before Pluto even got into the eighth house, and Pluto's just intensifying and and you know, yeah, it's just intensifying that process. You're more sensitive to these quote unquote flags, okay? And you're in a space right now to, to really manifest a divine connection. This energy is going to support it because you should be able to shed energies and identify things in your shadow from all your seventh house experiences. And because you have such a strong filtering system of being able to identify this flag, this energy, this and the third with potential situations. That's only allowing yourself to connect with people on, on certain genuine principles. You're able to read energies better, read between the lines better in your connections. That's only leading you to connect uh, with people on a genuine level. You feel me? Actually manifest situations where somebody, you thought you was on your healing journey. You thought you couldn't date in your healing journey. And this person is, how can you not date this person? They're doing everything to complement the healing journey. They're telling you, like, no, I know you just got that relationship. Take your time. Like, I'm here. You call me whenever you need to. You, we can still go out on a date or two. You don't have to feel pressured to, to do none of this. We could just keep getting to know each other. Ah, oh, suck it, suck it now. Th that type ish right there make you want to just be like, forget the healing journey. I <sighs> so understand it. Boro, it's okay. I understand. Like you, you working on a lot right now. You said you're abstaining. Okay, like we could just get to know each other. It don't, woman, stop playing. Stop. All right, because you make me want to cut the journey off early. Okay, with your understanding self, boy, that understanding energy go far. I mean, the understanding energy make the marriage last, family. I mean, the understanding energy turn the date. All right, to a sleepover into a relationship, family. Do you hear where I'm coming from? All right. I mean, Plymouth Rock landed on us. <laughs> All right, let me stop, gang. But that's what's going on with my cancers right there, guys. What we got? We got Leos, Virgos, Libra, Scorpios, Sag, Cap. So we did, okay. Okay, not too bad. Not too bad. We got seven signs to clean up tomorrow. All right, I forgot today was Saturday. I got work in a few. <laughs> oh, damn, the weekend was moving too fast. All right, but I just got a lot of energy. I'll be all right, y'all. Okay, I love y'all. Okay, don't go too crazy. Just, I'm telling y'all, this, this 48 hours this weekend is serious business while the sun is conjunct Pluto. You you look at a flag and you let it go over your head. You starting off Pluto and Aquarius wrong. You starting off all the way wrong. Okay, you identify what's heavy on spirit and what's playing out as a burden, and you get busy doing what you got to do with that energy. Do you got to confront it? Do you got to express something to it? You know, whatever you feel like heart, your spirit is calling you to do to get that cycle aligned or in a healthy space or just get out of that cycle or that environment. That's very serious because this has a huge tone towards how we start in this cycle with the Pluto journey moving into that Aquarius house. All right, family. All right, family. I love y'all. Y'all already know what it is. I'm going to see y'all tomorrow.